Hello everyone, so good morning, good day, good afternoon, or where, what time are you watching this video? So for today, we'll be finishing up the last topic in evolutionary bio, and this is on chapter 7, Evidences of Evolution. So, um, pasintabi na lang muna kasi hindi ako masyadong gamay in recording uh, our topic, and uh, this will be my first time, so... Please bear with me for the succeeding lessons. For several months that we have discussed in evolutionary bio, we have seen that evolution or descent with modification is really happening to our organism or to any organism, may it be in the micro scale or macro scale. Now, for today, we'll be talking about the evidences that is present or presented to the science world as proof that evolution do exist to organisms. And as you can see here, it, uh, evolution runs millions to billions of years ago. So, uh, people might be questioning how is it possible that there is really an evolution if this organism was alive 15 million years ago, 50 billion years ago, that we don't see them at all? Hence, there are several ways or proofs that were gathered by our scientists. So, meron tong, uh, meron tayong ngayon, sa ngayon, na alam niyo na rin na mga bagay na hinanap ng mga scientists or uh, mga researchers that prove that organisms change through time and it is being passed through parents to offspring or generation per generation. So, some of these evidences are, as you can see here on the picture on our left side, these are some of but pictures of evidence of evolution. Now, if you will be seeing on the picture, these are organisms that are not alive right now. Yet, the question is, why is it there are imprints, there are these modes of organism that could be seen on rocks or sedimentary rocks that are uh, found millions to billions of years ago? So, in terms of this, there are several uh, caricatures or animations that were seen or made artistically by several people um, based on o base sa kung ano yung mga nakita nila na imprints dito sa mga stones. And if you can see here on the last picture, one might, uh, might say, what are these organisms? Uh, I can, we don't seem to find these organisms right now. Yet, why are there some imprints that is left on or is excavated by geologists, excavate, excavated by ar uh, archaeologists in several areas of the world. So, bakit meron tayong mga imprints ng ganito? These are now several information that is like mind-boggling to some of um, people that have excavated or seen these uh, materials. So, because of this, um, several uh, evidences, no? <laughs> uh, because of the several um, discoveries of some people, this now led some of the scientists um, think that what Charles Darwin is saying might be true, that is evolution or organisms are really descents of ancestral or previously living organisms that have been modified through time because of several environmental factors. According to me, the history of living things is documented through multiple lines of evidence that converge to tell the story of life through time. Um, this convergence of several evidences might be proof of the life uh, that our ancestors have and might be proof of organisms modifying themselves to suit certain environment.
So, in this section, we will be exploring the lines of evidence that are used to reconstruct the story of evolution of organisms. This now, uh, these lines of evidences include one, fossil and fossil records. As you can see here on the middle picture, these are fossil records. No? Two, uh, second evidence for evolution is the comparative analysis or comparative anatomy analysis of organisms that are seemingly homologous to each other. Hence, we have their um, homologies as evidence of evolution. Third, we have biochemical evidences. And fourth, we have observable events. These observable events are those that are, are events that are distributed in time and space and were discovered and proved on the timeline via carbon dating. Now, as you can see here on the evidences, we have micro evidences and we have macro evidences depending on the records or the discoveries that can be seen on the um, land or on the lithospheric plates of our Earth. Now, first off, for the lines of evidence for evolution is fossil or and fossil records. Now, fossil and fossil records now will provide snapshots of the past that when assembled, it will give us or illustrate a panorama of evolutionary change over the past 4 billion years. Now, now um, we, uh, uh, um, so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Some of the scientists or some of the geologists that have discovered several fossils could only obtain few representatives of organism that might have lived in the past. Now, this uh, simple or this few uh, fossil records now provides snapshots of the past. It gives uh, scientists, researchers, and people things to think about or things to seem to uh, understand that there are organisms in the past that are not well living right now but seem to be lived millions of years ago now these snapshots that or these fossil records that could be found in different places of the world when we assemble them chronologically depending on the carbon date or ilang taon na yung fossil na yun kapag ninatag siya Nayusha in chronological uh, order based on the age of these fossils, it will illustrate a panorama of organisms. Now, itong panorama na to will give now people ideas na from small ones to large ones until these organisms become so humongous and gigantic and then all of a sudden they become they, they become extinct or they, they were not now uh, living in our current era. So, para when, when these fossils now become, uh, these fossils as an evidence will provide uh, illustration of how organisms transition from being this small, from being living on the oceans like here 543 million years ago, to um, trying to live as a trilobite, as an ammonite, and then it will move on to Tiktaalix and Mesoparians uh, during the Devonian period. And then there's a transition of organisms from the ocean. They will transition to the land, and this transition organisms will try to live uh, and suit their their their. Um, qualifications or modify their characteristics to suit living and terrestrial organisms until the time that there are again snapshots of fossils that could be seen 
or age during the permanent period, the time wherein there's a start now of um, organism having thick scales, and then during Triassic, Jurassic period, and then all of a sudden the extinction or the the this organism so becomes gone or no one has in a big blast time timeline and then there's a new fossil record that will date that is a smooth and second which is now way different from them before so itong mga fossils na to once na collect ng mga scientists uh, and they will be carbon dated for their age they could now be arranged they could now be inputted on the evolutionary timeline and it will now give ideas to scientists uh, how organisms have changed or might have changed from these ancestors. Now, it provides us a panorama of descent of modification of organisms through time. I hope you do uh, get what I am saying, but just take this in, uh, this in, in consideration that fossil as an evidence of uh, evolution, it provides um, snapshots, it pro provides pictures of the past, it provides proof of organism that live in the past. I know? So I hope that you can see this part. Now, um, People become aware or people now uh, become interested. Uh, they, be ha they, they put or they vest their interest on fossils, um, especially during the time of these two people. Um, he married Anne Mantle and her husband, Dr. Gideon Algernon Al Mantle. But sa dalawang ito, ang mas talagang nag-provide uh, ng uh, yung parang nag-spark ng pagkakaroon ng interest ng mga tao sa fossil and to dig fossils further and to try to excavate organisms of the past is because of Mary Ann Mantle. Mary Ann Mantle um, found the first evidence of a living organism, a reptilian organism in the past just by walking or they're just traveling from their um, area going parang may pupuntahan silang ibang lugar and along the way while they are trying to rest um, at one area Mary Ann Mantle um, nagdahad na daw siya and sa kanyang paglalakad at pagmumuni-muni meron daw nakapansin or meron nakakuha ng kanyang pagtingin dun sa isang rock area, rocky area, and that rock is glistening. So, sabi niya, baka daw diamond. And then, when they went, or when Mary Ann Mantle went in there, meron siyang nakitang odd-looking uh, material that is embedded on the stone. During that time, hindi naman niya alam kung ano itong, uh, it, uh, ano ba ito, but this was the exact replica. Itong una, itong picture in here, this was the exact um, uh, material that Mary Ann Mantle had discovered in 1822. Now, so two of the iguanodon teeth were found by Mary Ann Mantle still embedded in the rock. During that time, hindi pa sure, hindi pa naman nila alam iguanodon ito. And no one really knows what is iguanodon during that time. So, um, when Mary Ann Manta took this, dinala niya itong stone na ito na merong ngitin na ng organism. Dinala niya ito sa kanyang husband, kay Dr. Gideon. But, uh, Dr. Gideon is a budding, nagsisimula pa lang siya or interested siya sa paleontologist. So, ginawa naman ng na kanyang asawa, dinala niya itong uh, samples, itong nakuha ni Mary Ann sa uh, I think museum and they try to find kung ano yung ano ba ito na nakita nila is this a bone is this something parang ganon um, to to his futile attempt wala siyang nakitang kaparehong to hindi niya nakita uh, wala siyang nakitang 
same bone for this na organism, hindi niya makitaan sa mga current living organisms natin na sambo sa nasa museum kung ano ito. Until time na nakakita siya ng mga uh, dinala doon sa museum ng bones or remains of iguana, the current iguanas that we have. And Dr. Gideon, together, together with some of the uh, scientists na nilagkita niya, have observed that this uh, represented rock material, itong material na naka-embed sa stone na to, seems like an enlarged version of the teeth of the current iguanas that we have. So, during this time, binalikan nila Dr. Gideon yung area kung saan to nakita and then they have found several remains ng bones nung, nung uh, organism na to. But, they have observed na may similarity yung ibang bone na nakuha niya sa uh, iguana na meron tayo, but 10 times larger. Now, uh, don't be confused, no? During, uh, in 1822, uh, nakita ito ni Mary Ann Mantle. But in 1600s, meron nang nakitang um, representative evidence of a megalosaurus, parang malaki siyang bone, and hindi siya pinigyang pansin ng mga tao during the time in 1600s. However, nung nakita ni Mary Ann Mantle, itong malaking ngipin na to, and na-discover nila Dr. Gideon yung iba pang parts or bones or remains of this um, organism, and they have found out na kamukhang kamukha siya ng mga current living iguanas, doon na nag-spark or binamitan yung evidence of megalosaurus. Kaya in 1824 naman, sinimulan na yung um, paghahanap or pag-iintindi sa megalosaurus. Now, back in here, during this time, hindi nila ma-identify anong organism ito. And during that time, parang this now spark the the enthusiasm of many scientists or many researchers to excavate more and more and more of these dinosaurs. Actually, because of iguanodon, doon na nagkaroon ngayon ng terminology for dinosaur. Now, nung nilatag nila yung, yung remains na to, wala naman siyang pangalan. So, since it looks like a living iguana, but larger now, ano, they now name the remain as, or the organism as iguano don, a herbivore, um, a terrestrial reptile that lived in the past. So, from then on, si, si Mary Ann Mantle at si Dr. Mantle talaga, yun yung spark ng um, enthusiasm of most of scientists during their time to give credit or to excavate more, more, more um, fossils of dinosaurs. No? Now, this crucial discovery helped to kickstart our fascination with dinosaurs. Kaya nga, in, as I said, in 1824, dun na ngayon, uh, parang mas binuo yung idea kay Megalosaurus, yung malaki, mas malaki pa kay iguana doon na um, reptilian, uh, terrestrial or terrestrial reptile or other dinosaur. Now, fossil, we have um, already talked about this, I think, in chapter 2 or chapter 3. That fossil is any evidence of ancient life with an age limit uh, of 10,000 years old. It is just a big or emphasized before that an organism or a remain or a dead uh, material of an organism could be considered as a fossil if it is at least 10,000 years old. In most of our fossils, they are found embedded on sedimentary rocks. This is natural because metamorphic rocks, um, they easily Alam niyo naman na kapag metamorphic, mas mabilis siyang uh, mag-degrade, mas mabilis siyang masira kumpara sa mga sedimentary rocks. And igneous rocks are produced by volcanic eruptions. So, if ever man, 
no the remains in the igneous rocks will be gone uh, before being excavated again again because in igneous rocks in ini spout out ito ng mga volcano so nasusunod na yung remains so wala talaga yung nakikita and most of the sedimentary rocks are really good um, preserves or para sa nang very good mag preserve when it comes to the remains or when it comes to the living organisms before millions of years ago now there are two main types of fossils and i know you are familiar with it you have the direct fossils or termed as remains these are um, fossils such as bones teeth those that are really kaya mo siyang ingress na hawakan talaga siya no as an example as you can see on the picture we have there your um yung pinaka series ng teeth ng organism or yung skull niya with those of the teeth you have the bones in there you have some of the uh, phalanges na buhay o yung mga nails na buhay pa ay buhay pa natin tira pa doon sa organism hindi naman buhay ba <laughs> patay na nga ito no? fossils or yung mga phalanges yung mga parang kuku kuku or hooves ng mga organism na preserved sa mga sedimentary rocks the second of the type of fossil is now our indirect fossils. They are termed as imprints, pero mamaya matapansin nyo, um, they're not just imprints, no. There are imprints, traces, or even um, modes or cast of organisms uh, that are previously uh, in there. Kumbaga, ito yung mga ano na, indirect, there is no... Uh, tangible um, remains of the organism. What is left is just impressions or imaginations or yung parang naiwan lang naman ka ng mga organism. Some of indirect fossils are hindi yung organism mismo ha, but ito na yung mga products, byproducts ng organism such as yung mga fossilized poop natin or yung mga coprolites. Now, um, this now on the second picture in here are your indirect fossils. As you can see, imprints lang sila ng mga um, lycophytes that were very adamant, very uh, prolific during the Carboniferous period. No? And then, this is an example of, kung titignan nyo itong dalawa uh, below, the first one is an ammonite. It's like Meron tayong representative na buhay ngayon ay yung shell siya na ganun tapos pag lumangoy siya parang pabalitan. Para siyang squid na may shell. Meron, meron tayong living representative nito eh. Kaya ang very makinis yung kanyang shell. No? Hindi siya kasing groove ng ito. Now, but what I want you to look at in here, dun sa um, picture uh, on the left side below, on the lowest portion sa left, lower portion of this um, this presentation as you can see that this is a direct fossil kasi this is a shell shell talaga na na preserve as a fossil of an ammonite ammonites or ammonites a-m-m-o-n-i-t-e-s ammonites and dito sa ating right below right picture natin. These are also ammonites, but these are now considered as indirect fossil. Bakit? Ito naman ngayon ay molde na. Parang, excuse me, parang yung, yung shell ng ammonites ay naidikit mo dun sa malambot na sedimentary rock and naiwan doon yung print or imprint ng shell ng ammonites. So, technically mga anak, uh, fossils or remains or imprints pwedeng um, same organism siya pero na-classify siya into a direct fossil or indirect fossil. Depende kasi yan sa kung ano yung na-preserve sa sedimentary rocks. As you can see here on the pictures below nitong dalawa. It's the same ammonites pero yung sa una sa left side is a direct one kasi shell talaga na-preserve and yung sa kabila sa right side naman below 
is still an ammonite, a fossil, pero this is an indirect fossil. Now. It's only a trace, it's only a mold of the organism. Okay, I hope that is very clear with you. Later on, makikita nyo, this direct fossils and indirect fossils, meron pa siyang several types. Okay, now, so what kung my fossil? How does it affect evolution? How does it prove evolution? So, there are significance of fossils. Number one, so organisms have appeared and disappeared and might have changed over time. Thus, uh, this now shows one, ano bang importance of fossil? Number one, the fossil now will tell us that the species might have underwent or became extinct. Some of the species continued and proliferate up until now. And you know that there are living fossils, as I have said to you, no? Uh, fossils also tells or reveals ancient climate and environmental conditions. Yes, that is correct. Na, na kahit na, ha? Paano, ma'am? Eh, di ba ang nakikiralang naman sa sa fossil records or the remains of the organism. Ang natitira lang naman are yung mga impressions of the organism. Now, actually, uh, this organism, yung mga fossil natin, yung mga living organism before, they will tell any scientist what are the current climate during that time. What are the type of environmental conditions during that time. Kasi, for example, meron tayong uh, series of teeth ng different um, nuance in the past. So, pag tinignan yung klase ng ngipin nila, puro molar or tama, puro molar lang or puro incisors lang. Wala ka talaga makitang canine, wala ka makitang ibang klase ng ngipin. That actually reveals an environmental condition na ang food source na prevalent dun sa paligid ng organism na yun ay more of herbs rather than meat or paning they are herb eating and so on. Sa, sa it reveals ancient climate, some of fossil um, trunks of trees na nakikita, makikita mo rin doon sa kanyang cambium doon sa loob niya um, the how harsh the environment is hindi pa doon sa mga sa puno, kasi pag hinati mo, meron tayong rings, yung mga rings na yun, yung mga cambiums natin na, na makikita mo, some are thick, some are thin it depends, tapos yung rings na yun, yung, yung dark area doon, makikita mo makapal o manipis, it reveals what type of climate was prevalent during that time. Uh, parang, ha, pwede pala yun? Yes, anak, pwede siya. Kasi, it will reveal, imagine mo, wala siyang buhok o may buhok siya. Sa atin pa na, ngayon, kapag nakita mo yung organism na ma-fur, alam mong cold temperature. Pag walang fur, alam mo naman na nasa temperate or tropical area. Of course, these organisms will also reveal what type of climate, depending sa nakikita o makikita doon sa uh, direct or indirect fossil na nakuha. It also, fossil also indicates development of life from simple to complex. Yes, makita mo from very minute organism, napakalit, and then boom, isang napaka-gigantic, napakalaking, um, ano siya, ah, uh, Ang mga baby na malaking dinosaur, alam ng anak ko yun, pantaan, pantalosaurus mo yun. Anyway, mayroon from a very small one to a very um, humongous dinosaur. No? So, makikita mo on even on from one single cell to multiple single multiple cell organisms like that. So, from cyanobacteria, ba, na colonies, stromatonites, to Hello, ikaw na napaka complex, napaka komplikado mong nilalang. <laughs> diba? Lahat na lahat na lang pinakomplikin kahit hindi naman ang top. Char. Okay, next. Fossil also indicates life began in water. Mamaya makikita nyo, 
paano naman nalaman na talagang life become important? Nakikita niya to later on. And five, the fossils also reveal transitional forms of organism. These transitional forms will reveal links between groups. No? Links between uh, reptiles and birds. This is their archaeopteryx. Then you have here use theopteron, the amphibious fish. So from water to land. So fish and amphibia. And Samuria, our reptile-like amphibians. And of course, meron naman tayong mga mammal-like reptiles and whales with hind limbs or whales na merong paa. So, parang is no, meron may paa, parang bali ng ano yun, nasa lupa. Ano yung mga, ako ba yun? Char. Okay. So, tingnan natin yung mga significance ng fossil. Kasi sinasabi nga, fossil and fossil record is an evidence of evolution. Now, as you can see later on, na makikita nyo sa, sa mga ipapresent kong fossil, dito nyo na makikita na really, um, there is evolution. There is descent with modification na nangyayari. Now, um, before that, no, um, of course, there's extinction of organisms. Alam niyo naman na yan. Um, I don't need to dwell on it kasi wala. Pag wala na dito, pero meron dun sa fossil record na naman nagkaroon ng extinction na nangyari. Now, um, so sa pangalawa, paano yung it, um, fossil will reveal ancient climate and uh, environmental conditions? So, as you can see in here, Temperature of planet Earth. Makikita mo yung um, differences. So, degrees Celsius compared sa ngayon na meron tayo and before. You can see that there's a very high temperature, cold temperature, and then there's what we have right now or in the 1990s. Preferably, baka ngayon mas mataas na to and becoming hot again. No? Now, um, the, the type of leaves na merong or makikita sa ating mga halaman, whether it's needle-like, yung maninipis, or broad-like, yung makakapal, indicates or are, um, also will tell that there is climate change or environmental conditions. Actually, ang mga halaman talaga, ang pinakamagandang indicator na climate change in the past. Why? Because there's a transition, there's a change from middle-like to broad ones. Ibig sabihin, kapag broad ka kasi, tas sub, sobra, <laughs> sobrang init, as broad yung leaf mo, imagine. So, mas malaki yung naka-expose sa sunlight. And this, eh, kung sobra, sobra, sobra init during that time, Parang hindi ata maganda na very broad ang mga leaves mo kasi prone ka sa dehydration or desiccation. So, some of the plants now opted to parang needle-needle-like forms. Meaning, uh, during that time, there's a probability na mainit ang, ang paligid. And then, yung nagkaroon na ng broad o yung matatabang dahon like, like what we have right now, probably there is now... Uh, colder temperatures but then ganun mga anak you can see that on the leaves itself now typically plants in warmer climates have larger leaves with smoother edges while plants in cooler climates have smaller leaves with more jerk edges ito another another um alam niyo naman to sa ecology, another adaptation of our organisms, especially on the plants. Kapag warmer climates ka, larger leaves daw with smoother edges, yung, yung alam niyo sa, yung sa gilid natin, we have the serrate, yung may, meron tayo yung pagalanggal sa, sa margin ng ating leaves, no? Yung iba naman, kapag climate naman is malamig, smaller leaves naman daw siya, and so on. So, Kanina sabi ko sa inyo, kapag very broad siya, tapos sobrang init, prone to sa desiccation, no? So, ang mangyari, pwede naman ang gawin niya is that ang adaptation niya is very smooth na margin. Pwede nga no, or pwede nga sa side niya. Depende siya. Pero kasi, yan, as you can see in here, kapag naman warmer climates, larger leaves ang meron sa halaman daw with smooth edges. The edges ang importante dito sa atin. So, 
Pwede kasi na meron naman talagang large leaves sa mga warm areas. So, pwede nga naman. So, uh, kung, kung broad ang leaves sa warm areas, eh, di ba prone sa desiccation tulad na sa damo? Yes. So, meron naman siya siguro other adaptation. Pwede nga naman. And kapag naman daw sa cold climates, pwede needle-like o yung maninipis o maliliit na parang Parang sa mga pine tree conifers, di ba, makikita nyo yung mga lusi na uh, needle-like, mali maliliit lang, small lang siya, or maninipis type lang siya. Pero, yung edges niya, mas parang busy, mas maraming um, convolutions. To, mas maraming ganun, uh, waves or something like that. Okay? And yung isa pa sinasabi ko sa inyo, on the trunk of the plant, so yung mga cambium-cambium na yan, that also shows or can show ng um, changes in the climate. Kasi kapag malamig or mainit, pwede this, this will now initiate, pwede it hastens or pwede it, um, at tawag mo dito, stops the, um, what's going on this? Uh, meristematic tissues from producing. Diba? Naalala nyo sa plant anatomy nyo, you have there your meristematic tissues. Ito yung mga um, tissues of the plant na um, continuously dividing and producing that is can or can be seen in cork cambium. So, kapag ka sobrang lamig or during the time na ice ang ang soil, mag-hybrating yung mga halaman. So, makikita mo doon that growth stops or meristematic tissues are not uh, de actively dividing. And then, kapag okay na naman ang environment, makikita mo kung makapala naman yung tissue doon sa rings ng, ng trunk ng plant. You can see that, you can observe that on plants kasi nga, plants cannot walk, they cannot run, they cannot move from one place to another to find a more suitable environment. So, nandun lang sila. So, sila yung pinakamagandang indicator ng ancient climate and environmental conditions para sa mga scientists na tingnan kung ano yung meron in the past. Okay? Now, um, it also reveal, actually, no, it also reveal uh, not only the ancient climate, uh, environmental conditions like Ano yung nagpo-proliferate na halaman? Ano yung mga nagpo-proliferate na organisms? It could also be seen on fossils such as this coprolite. Ito nakikita niyo ang picture na to is a fossilized tae or poop. <laughs> now, as you can see, it is 20, 29 cm long and in spiral form. So, it could suggest no, kung ganun kalaki, 29 centimeter ang poop mo, isang ruler, ang tae na naka-fossilize. Ang laki-laki nun. So, ibig sabihin, itong organism na to ay malaki. In, in relatively. At kung titignan mo, sa picture niya, pa-coil ang poop. So, there's a probability na yung uh, intestinal or gastrointestinal um, arrangement no the organism is in spiral form, pa ikot siya. Not the one that we see na parang ganun sa mga atin na parang pa ganyan ganyan siya. This one siguro pa, pa spiral ang kanya. Nangyari. Now, what does fossilized poop tell? Now, it may include seeds, it may include different meats, it may include bark. It, that may suggest that the animal is it came from an animal that ate plants or this poop might have um, bones, remains, or, or some of the meat or cells ng mga kinain niya prey na mga representative organisms na pwede pang i-run kung pwede pa, no? Baka pwede pa siyang i-run for the ending sequencing. Ganun. So, when magnified, itong mga coprolites na to, plants often have distinctive shapes and patterns making it possible for scientists to work out what type of plant they are looking at, even when it is partly digested and inside a coprolite. So, scientists can learn about both a prehistoric animal's diet and which plants were growing in its environment during this time. 
Okay. So, ganun siya kagaling. Na kahit ganyan yan, eh, ang laki-laki naman nung book, imagine, isang ruler, siguro naman ay eh, maraming information na makukuha dyan. Malalaking bits din siguro yung mga halaman. It could tell. No? Pwede niyang isabihin not only the diet, but it can also tell what is prevalent for ganasang during that time. So, by that, they can also know, kumari, sa lahat ng coprolites na kita nila on the area, malaging yun na yun na yun, or same same age. So, ibig sabihin, itong mga halaman o itong mga organism na nakita doon uh, yung DNA or yung information doon sa fossilized book na to are living during that time. So, sila yung prolific, sila yung marami kasi sila yung kinakain nung organism. Okay? Another one is, um, I think, ano yung pangatlo doon? Pansyonan ko, life starts at water ata. Alam nyo naman na yun. We have already discussed that theory from Open and How They Know Him Way Back Before. No? Ah, ito pala siya, number four. So, fossil indicates life begun in water. So, um, a very good documentary for this, alam nyo, I suggest if you could watch it on YouTube um, or you can watch it on um, history channel na alam ko kayo. This one. Or anything na meron kayo makukha na makunod ng video. Try to search Burgess Shale. Burgess Shale is one of, kumbaga, sa mga archaeologists, sa mga geologists. Ito na yung, and paleontologists, ito yung parang um, Yamashita treasure. Nandito yung napakagandang mga um, fossils of um, organisms, especially during the Cambrian and Precambrian um, time. No? Now, this British shale, this is a site where Charles Walcott, as you can see there, uh, the first one to discover fossils of the British shale in Canada. The slit in shale of the Stephen Formation are the green layers, and this is where most of the fossils have been found. As you can see here in the picture, I don't know if you can see my my uh, arrow in here, but as you can see here, it's a picture of the pula on the side, may, may parang rock dun sa dulo, and then on the middle, may pula, and then dun sa taas ng mga taong naglalakad, meron tayong gray bands, o parang parang siyang patong-patong na bond after bond after bond of rocks. That is where, o dyan nakaipit ngayon, yung mga fossils na na-discover ng mga paleontologists. No? So, an example of what you can see on the birch shale are this one. So, these are impression or imprints that you can have or found on this shale, this a shale na to, sedimentary shale na to, this ones. You know what is this, but this is trigobite. And then meron tayong mga ganito. Then we have this one, we have this one, to the point that when they saw it, parang, what is this? Parang, anong meron dito sa mga bato na to? And during the time when we, they open up one area, para siyang ang daming nakalagay doon. So, Burgess Shale is one of the um, mine, mine area, mining area naman, but parang Yamashita treasure of um, paleontologists, geologists, and archaeologists. No. This is another shot, another pictures or summary of pictures of um, what they can see in the Burgess Shale. So they can see this, they have this imprints, they have this. This one, this is the tribal bird na kinilang kinala nyo. You have this one, this one, and this one. Now, um, these two pictures on the right are actually, itong mga nandito naman ay mga um, animations or artist's um, idea on how they could see naman this uh, fossil. So, as you can see, Itong nasa taas natin na ito, this looks like this on the right side, yung second on the right setting fossil. And then, makikita nyo yung mga itsura on animated ones versus the fossilized ones. Actually, may reporter tayo na merong topic na ganito. 
in makikita or mapapansin nyo later on sa pinasa nila, meron sila ng discussion on this one. Excuse me. I think this birch shale, if I'm not mistaken, they call it as the ed edjakaran fauna. Ito yung explosion. No? This is the explosion of massive um, underwater creatures. Itong mga ito. Tingnan natin sa isa -isa. Okay. So, the birch shale fauna Hopefully, may balik ko pa. <laughs> Malas. Hindi ko na siya may balik. Okay, the first one or a first example of our um, purchased shale fauna is your hallucigenia. So, hallucigenia, if you can see in here, um, ito yung exact fossil na makita sa birch's shale. But, if we will be looking at it, it's a strange worm-like animal. It was covered with spikes. That is probably those spikes na to is protection against voracious predators. So, ibig sabihin, probably itong um, hallucigenia na ito ay paboritong prey ng mga predator during their time. Um, from the name itself, hallucinate, no? Hallucinate kasi meron siyang strange um, head area or parang may bilog siya dito sa kanyang one um, end, anterior end niya. I don't know which is the anterior end or posterior end nito, pero meron siyang kakaibang globule itsura dun sa isang anterior end niya. Yan din daw siyang hallucigenia. And also, um, hallucigenia kasi parang uh, whether bumaliktad siya or nabaliktad siya, parang nakakapag-hallucinate, hindi mo alam kung is it the dorsal or is it the ventral part? So, hallucigenia ang binigay sa kanyang name. There are several forms of hallucigenia that they have obtained in the British chain. Meron yung, like this one on the top, on the red one. We have this type, hallucigenia, the green one, and this one, yung blue one. So, meron siyang mga specific epithet, no, na nakita nila during this time. But, um, they all share most of the common characteristics of hallucigenia species. Okay? We have this one. This is a very artistic type. So, meron siyang parang pinapakita. Bukod sa spines, niya, spikes niya dito, there's also a feet. There's also hair projections here to which um, we don't know what it is for. And then, meron siyang anterior end and meron siyang posterior end. Another one for our um, British shale one is the Aishea. Aishea is a worm-like animal uh, bearing 10 pairs of clawed spinal limbs on the lower part of its body. So, para siyang hallucigenia, kaya lang sa hallucigenia kasi up and, uh, dorsal and ventral meron siya. Ito, what it's, it has is the um, ventral side lang. So, Mukha siyang centipede na malaking version or mukha siyang millipedes na malaking version. What is very prominent kay Aishea is that it has segmentation, no? Segments. Meron siyang mga repetitive segments that is very prominent ngayon sa kung titignan mo yung mga tapeworms natin, the flatworms. Also, segmentation is popular sa mga uh, class insecta natin. Um, segmentation or regionalization can also be seen on our arthropods. So, there's a probability siguro na well, we don't know, but it shares some of the characteristics. No? Another one for um, the British shale one is yung sanctacaris. So, it looks like a mukha siyang ano dito, no? Gastropod. Mukha siyang a uh, lobster na sinama mong may, may ganito insura no, na hindi mo maintindihan. But, what is very good about this one, as you can see, is that it has a wide head shield with six pairs of appendages projecting that on the segments. No? Excuse me. What is prominent in here is that they have bilateral, uh, by rams sila. 
What do you mean by ramos? By ramos is seen on your, I think, centipedes. So, may probability din na ito ata siguro ang ancestor nila. We're not sure, but they shared some of the characteristics of our gastropods right now, some of our insecta, and some of the um, uh, parts of our uh, diplopodia and milopodia. No? So, um, ito, kilalang kilalang nyo na siya. This is Polynoides or our trilobites, the said to be ancestor of many um, arthropoda. Ito kasi very prominent sa kanyang segmentation. Meron siyang head portion, may regionalization siya, may cephalization siya, meron siyang mga leg part, meron siyang mga antenna, it's shelled. So, um, trilobites are also prominent during the time in here, no? Actually, is nasabi na ito ay isang um, paboritong prey din ng mga predators or ng mga nasa top food chain during this time. Ito sa explosion of organisms na ito. No? Olinoides ang kanyang genes and, and this is known as your trilobites. We also have picaya. This picaya is a creature that is only a size of our thumb. So, ganito na kalaki. And, Pikaya is very strange, very manipis nang siya. And, it is said to be the ancestor of all vertebrates. Ibig sabihin ng anak. Si Pikaya, itong nakikita nyo ngayon, ang pinakalolo o lola mo. <laughs> natin pala. Siya ang pinaka-ancestor natin. Ganito lang tayo nagsimula. Ganito kaliit sa thumb. Ito ka lang noon. Ito ka o. Oh. Ito lang. Ito ka lang. Ito ka lang. And look at you now. <laughs> look at you now. From a very small one that said to be our ancestor. And you are this big, I don't know, creature <laughs> studying right now about them. Pikaya. This is the ancestor of all vertebrates. We have one of the top predators during the time. This is Opabinia. Opabinia is a predatory species displaying five eyes and a strange proboscis used to capture its prey. You know for a fact that this proboscis now is now a prominent, um, most specifically on the class insecta. So, Probably itong proboscis na po, pwede dito na muna din, mayon. But what is amazing in here is that lima ang mata niya. Five eyes. More more eyes, more more sitting. O ito yung parang pinaka pwede natin sabihin na can be connected with how the eyes of some of insects like bees and um Ito, flies um, are made of, baka ganito siya, baka ganito siya nag-umsa, or pwede rin hindi, di ba? depending on the environmental condition. Pero, ito yung mga nakita sa bridge shale. As strange as it is, and then ito yung mga sinasabing probable niya, no? probable niya itsura, if um, 3D, 3-dimensional or 2-dimensional. Of course, my favorite one, see, Anomalochorus. Anomalochorus is like a combination of lobster, a combination of all crustaceans. Now, it's the top predator during this time. It's malaki pa siya sa opabin niya. And it, favorite niya kainin ang mga trilobites. And yung una natin is yung halosigin niya. So as you can see in here, you have your opabinia, this one, you have your anomalocaris, you have your um, halosigin in here, and then may maninipis lang na, maninipis lang kasi yung mga itsura ng um, pikaya natin. No? And they swim differently. They do not swim the way that we have right now sa mga isla, yung pag ganyan, ganyan. They swim, ang alam ko pag ganyan sila, up and down. Ah, uh, yeah. Alam ko pag ano sila, hindi sila pag ano, or baliktad ako ng nakakalala. Okay? 
I have here a video animation of the Burgess Shale. I'm just not sure if I could take it. Let me try. I do not know if you can hear because I didn't hear it. Yeah, and part of the evidence what we're going to see next is how complex the animals that were found in the Burgess Shale, how actually complex they were. I want you folks to watch. I hope you can hear this one. These fossils gave science its first detailed look at the biology of the... Yeah, and they have fed by see. scraping microscopic particles off the seafloor. Oh, this is Pikaya. Pikaya, Pikaya. The animal most the frequently one. discovered at Walcott's quarry was Morella. This one, I'm going to tell Morella na sinasabi. More than 15,000... But if not, I will be sharing the site or yung, um, tama, the, the site where you can watch this um, little clip of the Burgess Shale species.
Okay, next off on the significance of fossil record is the transitional forms. Now, or the transitional fossils. This now reveal links between organisms. And we have a very famous from here, no? You have the Archaeopteryx, you have the Eustheopteron, you have the Seymoura, Seymouria, Seymouria, and we have other transitional organisms. Isa -isa okay. Now, Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is said to be the transition between reptiles and birds. Kasi when the fossil imprints, as you can see in here, the Archaeopteryx was excavated. I think we only have um, around 12 or very few lang ang representative ng Archaeopteryx. They have observed that it has characteristics of reptiles, as you can see here, sa kanyang mukha. It has yung kanyang beak, yung kanyang mouth part. It's having that rugged tooth. Meron siyang claw. No? Um, meron siyang mga characteristics of the mga reptiles. No? May claw siya, may finger siya. Yung, yung tail niya, unlike the tail that we have right now sa mga birds, di ba parang feather na lang yung sa mga birds. So, very, <coughs> excuse me, very minute yung kanilang pet. Dito sa Archaeopteryx, as in yung buong tail niyang yan, is bony, which is most representative or mas nakikita siya palagi sa mga um, dinosaurs or reptiles. As you can see here, dito sa fossilized one, itong itong fossil mismo picture in here, meron siyang um, bony, long bony tail or um, dyan, and then it has or it is covered by feather. Yun nga na, um, this Archaeopteryx contain feathers, it has wings, and it has the fingers, yung parang nakikita mo sa pakpak ng manok na yung sobra doon na claw or finger na yun. Or even on other um, birds, meron siya doon sobrang parang vestigial part no? wala namang sabi na nakikita mo doon sa wing part na kinakain mo na um, could be from these three claws na nandito sa taas ng wings niya. Now, um, this Archaeopteryx has been debated, no? Nag-debate kung is it really flying or is it like walking on its, 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 its bipedal? So, bakit siya na merong feathers, meron siya merong ganito? Actually, um, currently may nabasa ako na meron daw na excavate sa sa China that um, will disprove that it's not the Archaeopteryx that is the first or could be the transition um, fossil or transition organism between reptiles to class Aves. Parang hindi daw siya. Meron pa siyang discovered. However, continuous pa rin ang um, na-excavate din Archaeopteryx. I think ilan lang yung representative niya eh, no? na excuse me, ng Archaeopteryx kaya hindi pa masure kung hindi na ba siya ang transition organism for reptiles to birds baka meron na iba but as of the moment in most of the the museums and most of the uh, the ones that studying fossils they still accept Archaeopteryx as the transition between reptiles and Birds. Now, we also have next transition organism. This is the Eustheopteron. Now, si Eustheopteron actually sinipa niya sa trono. <laughs> Parang um, when he was not yet discovered, um, Tikta Alik was the famous one as a transition organism of or from fish like to amphibious type an organism. Kasi Tikta Alik was present around 370 million or so but use of Eustheopteron ang mas, I think mas matanda siya. Si Tikta Alik kasi 375 million years ago. Si Eustheopteron um, around 380 to 385 million siya. Now, 
The thing is, um, what makes it similar to organism is that yung cranial features, yung ulong features ng eustachopteron hanggang kay tiktaalik, hanggang kay ichthyostega, they share the the characteristics of amphibians. Kung papansin yung cranials niya, parang amphibians siya. But yung katawan niya is more of a fish type. Now, uh, what is... Um, bakit eh parang si ma'am si eustachopteron, parang mukhang fish. What is very prominent sa kanya is that it contains no a lobe fin. Yung lobe fin niya, hindi, yung, 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 yung fin niya, unlike sa mga isda na meron tayo ngayon na parang fin lang talaga siya. Yung, yung fin na yung eustachopteron is may buto, meron siyang bone. Na sinasabi that it could probably be like the phalanges that we have right now. Yung parang mga buto-buto, yung carpal, metacarpals natin. Parang ganun daw yung, yung nakikita na nakayustayopteron. Hindi siya yung fin na normal fin ng mga fishes. Although, no, although guys, um, parang still a debate uh, as to whether is it eustayopteron ba? Tikta alit ba? Tikta yustayga ba? Actually, currently ata ang naninalo sa sa when it comes to who is really the transition uh, organism from water to land si ectaustega ata now ang sabi kasi doon noon uh, drink the like, information kay tiktalik organisms were forced to live out of the ocean and move to land um, sabi naman, currently, based on several researches, um, these organisms are not really moving into land. Malapit nang sinasad land, but they do not dwell long on land. Mas ano pa rin sila, kahit na meron daw silang mga pedals, itong mga tetrapods na to, kahit na meron parang silang mga paa-paa, they still choose to live underwater rather than on the terrestrial. Now, it's still a question as to why did these organisms or what's really causes these transitional organisms to live on land. Hindi pa rin siya ganun kalina. But what is um, very uh, clear right now, it is the eustenopteron uh, organism that has the first fins that are bony parang bones ng mga tetrapods and that its fins are actually para siyang naglalakad parang pinangtatapak niya doon sa ground yung kanyang mga fins rather than pang swing-swing na ganyan parang pinaapak-apak ni Winston of Terran yung fin niya on above ground yung tubig dun sa ground dun sa lupa sa ilalim ng tubig no? So, as you can see in here, you have your eustenopteron, and then, ay, hindi ko na may bold, like, <laughs> eustenopteron, and, ano, and then there's Darwin. So, tingnan nyo na lang siya. Another transition organism is the Sermuria, or Sermuria. Here, it's a group of permocarboniferous reptilian morphs with both terrestrial and aquatic taxa. It's like an amphibian na reptile din. Yung isa kasi, fish na amphibian. Ito naman, amphibian na parang reptile. Amphibian kasi, yung ulo na naman niya, mukhang ulo ng mga amphibians. Pero what is very clear dyan, meron siyang um, bony rib cage that is um, hindi siya rigid na kapag ginalaw niya, parang sa atin, hindi naman sumasama yung buong katawan niya pag gano'n sa site na yun. So, parang may extend, extend yun. I think that's one of the difference nito, no? And then, this is the anonymous itsura daw ng um, Simuria. And it looks like our very own basakay. The only thing is that manipis um, parang mutaba itong tail niya. And ganito siya kalaki. So, parang siya talagang basakay. Ano? Parang talaga siya nasa. Now, we have 
the next one this is now whales with hind limbs so kung napanood niyo sa the crudes alam di ba meron doon yung whale sa i think part 1 ng the crudes na nagtago sila sa whale sa bunga ng whale tapos binugas na tapos naglakad yung whale so it was said na before no etong ating baleen whales yung ating mysticetti here one this one these are modern ones no modern ones to modern yan and then ito ang modern din yan so this one no itong whales na meron tayo ngayon came from no from organism that has this area itong mga uh, pedals na ito as you can see ang proof kasi dito is that some of our modern whales right now like this is sperm whale or the toothed whales natin they have this area ito they have this this is a vestigial structure when we say vestigial structure these are structures na it is present on the body of the organism but it doesn't seem to have any function nandun lang siya so most of the um researchers said na itong vestigial portion na ito itong structure na to on the hind area of the sperm was once an area where you can find or ito yung pinaka uh, pinanggalingan ay sorry mali pala burahin natin ito yung pinaka uh, ay sorry ito yung ito itong nanditong paa niya no itong paan na ito ito siya ito, itong nasa dulo na ito ito yung sa vestigial part na yan okay ang gulo na pero this one is seem to be pinangkarinan nito is itong pedal na ito kung saan it was used by the um, whales um, as their hind limbs. It's not the one that we have right now na absent na siya and there's only a tail for movement. No? Another thing is that bukod doon, actually, kung, kung meron tayong organism katulad ni Simoria, katulad ni Eustenoptero, ni Ectaiostega na from water pumunta ng land, ang whale, ang story niya is that it is an organism from the land and went to the ocean. So, this is uh, Meat Pachycetus. Itong isang ito. Uh, Meat Pachycetus. Ito. Pachycetus, this one, is like a goat type, dog type organism that is walking on four legs and said to be the ancestor of many whales that we have right now and they are four-legged creature as you can see in here we have the pachytecus here pachycetus or pachycetus here that wait lang ha Itong si Pachycetus na to here. Ito siya. This one. No? Yan. Si Pachycetus dyan is said to be the four ancestor of the uh, whales that we have right now. So, try to imagine yung paa. Ito siya. For swimming na. And then, ayan na siya. And slowly, slowly, the hind limbs were uh, diminishes or nawala. So, nawala siya and becomes only a tail. So, there's no modification. But come to think of it, no? When whales walk on four legs, it looks like exactly the dogs that we have right now or the ghosts that we have right now. And then, it, it moves from land to water. So, kung meron tayo from water to land, meron din tayong organism so na ah, nagsawa sa land, pumunta sa water. So, the, the reason why they did that or why this organism is transitioned or moved from the land to, to the sea is still 
a question to most of researchers and scientists natin. So, hindi pa rin na alam ang sagot as to why. Okay. Next that we have, um, okay. So, yun yung sa fossils ng example. Why is fossil an, uh, an, an evidence of evolution? So, makikita nyo naman doon sa mga pinasend ko yung transition ng organisms. No? Now, um, fossils in here, balikan ko lang, we have two types. We have the direct fossils and the indirect fossils. And I said, this um, fossils could be cell subdivided into several forms. Let's look at it. For the rock fossils, we have several types. One, we have what you call as the remnants. These are true fossil parts of an of early organisms. Ibig sabihin, remnants are direct fossils that are tangible. Nahawakan mo, nakikita mo, na ayos mo. Like bones, like teeth, like the... Basta lahat ng tungkol doon sa organism mismo. Okay? The next that we have are frozen fossils. This is the entire organism that is preserved because of ice. A uh, very good example yung nakita ng buong buo na um, baby, excuse me, baby mammoth na nakita sa frozen siya sa ice. Actually, hindi lang naman si baby mammoth. Meron din yung ganito ka na nakita na gano'n na nakita on iced areas natin, frozen areas natin. They are actually, I think, ang ginawa ato ng mga, I hope kung Chinese ito, no, but I think the scientists were trying to um, produce this baby mammoth na ito gagamitin nila yung DNA kasi na-preserve ng mabuti yung several parts nito. I think they will be using it for uh, mga man type ng ano na ito? Uh, technology, they will make a copy. I forgot the term. They will make a copy like how they did with Dolly the Sheep. So, they make an exact copy of the mammoth. I think they are planning to do that and they will put it uh, surrogately or palalakin. I don't know how they will do it, but um, they are planning to from from the DNA of it at that. They are planning to um, make a copy of this mammoth. I don't know how they will do it, but I think it's on the plan of these researchers. Next of the direct fossils that we have are petrification. Ang petrification, anak, mga anak, is that these are real organisms. At a real organism, you know, but what happened is that the minerals replace the hard parts. So, Itong mga bones na to is not actually anymore a bone, but rather these are now minerals replacing the calcium component of the bone. Same with this tree. Kung titignan nyo itong mabuti, it's not anymore the exact, no, exact cell. Of course, meron pa rin iba dyan na cell, but most of the trunk was mineralized. Kaya kung titignan mo parang ginto or very smooth yung cambium and yung bark niya, parang matigas na clay na siya rather than the normal dead trunk that we have. Petrification. Um, petrify. Parang yung nakakadakot yung term na. Pero, um, the minerals just replace the hard parts of the organism. And last for direct fossils are the amber. Ito yung entire organism is fossilized in Trisa. And the reason why we have Jurassic Park 1, 2, 3, 4, Ah, 5, 6, 7, dami nata. So, the reason why we have Jurassic Park movie, um, the amber from the mosquito, na yung mosquito may binibear na blood ng dinosaur, and from the blood of the dinosaur, boom, meron ka ng Jurassic Park. Actually, it's an entire organism no, na na-fossilized. Actually, dito sa makikita mo, this is a feather, no, but you have there uh, the presence of a parasite and within the parasite, ito, meron dyan, at yung nasa loob niya, contains the DNA of this organism. And the, the thing is, scientists could really make a copy of this organisms out of that DNA. Pwede nyo nang gawin yan. Now, 
on the type of uh, process, the indirect ones, meron pa siyang subtypes. One of it is the imprint. Sinasabi ko na sa inyo to. Yung nagkakaroon ng, nag-iiwan siya ng print. Nag-imprint siya parang nalalag, naigaganin lang niya. And then, the entire organism could be, excuse me, could be desiccated. Nawawala siya. Ang naiiwan lang is yung naiwan niyang parang impression dun sa sedimentary rock. And then, we have a mold, which is quite different pagdating sa imprint. Sa imprint kasi, um, this is more of the leaf and the feathers. Sa mold, it takes into consideration yung um, outside um, shape of the organism. Like here, this is an um, ammonite and mold lang ang natira kasi parang outside lang yung kanyang nako. Minold eh. Parang na mold. <laughs> parang ito. Yeah, parang ganyan. And then we have casts. Sa cast naman, mold filled with minerals. So, ano nangyari dito, hindi lang siya basta na mold eh, yung sa labas, pang labas niya, but rather, pati yung doob ng organism na pasok, na filled in ng ating um, minerals. So, parang tulad sa paamo na, or sa, tama, sa paamo na in, uh, outside and inside must be in, um, penetrated by the minerals. So, yung mo, mo, uh, cast. Sa mold kasi, outside na. Parang nakuha lang yung shape ng shell, nakuha lang yung shape ng bone, yun, yun siya. Ito kasi, parang siyang petrification na uh, mold type. No? Kaya lang, indirect fossil siya kasi, hindi naman talaga yun yung organism. Hindi, hindi siya yung organism. What happens is that, uh, minerals na lang siya. Wala talaga tayong organism siya. And of course, we have the trace. These are traces of organism. It provides information about organisms live, hunted, uh, food preference, etc. This is the trace of a foot of a dinosaur. We also have the coprolites. I have already discussed how they get information from another. Ah, okay. No. Sorry. Next on the topic is how can a fossil be aged? Alam niyo ang reason nito. This is carbon dating. Okay. So carbon dating is the main reason for it. So, yan siya. Carbon dating using carbon-14, uranium-238, potassium-40. Those that have isotopes that could at least, pagkaubos ng kanyang isotopes takes um, into account how much is the age of the organism. Kaya niya millions to billions of years. So, it measures the proportion of an isotope relative to its more stable form or half-life. Don't you know it? Okay? Now, why is fossil record incomplete? Now, siba sabi ko sa earlier, fossil records provide snapshots of the previous life. Um, it's incomplete one because, of course, the soft tissues are rarely preserved. Two, fossilization takes place only in a certain type of habitats. Hindi naman porque um, there's a source of sedimentary rocks, um, pag natabunan siya, mapapreserve na siya. No. There are several conditions and that will uh, allow fossilization to take place and kailangan din ng favorable conditions. So, hindi talaga lahat ng organism talaga may mga missing links pa tayo as to um, yung mga transitional uh, organisms na hindi para na excavate or probably hindi na fossilized properly. So, for a fossilization to take place, kung titignan mo to, so, we have the dead dinosaurs. It should be very um, conducive and dapat hindi siya naapektuhan ng tectonic factors kasi pwedeng alam niyo naman, diba, may mga subduction zones tayo, pwede yung lumubog, pwede yung lumubog sa ilalim, and so, nabubura yung remains. So, 
Depende. Sortihan talaga ang fossilization, guys. It's not perfectly as it is, no? Next is that, and sinabi ko nga, movement of Earth's crust, mga subduction uh, activities natin, yung mga uh, tectonic factors natin could obliterate or cover or destroy the fossils before even being um, discovered by people. And of course, for paleontologists have not dug up every place on it. Hindi pa naman. Kaya, minsan, di ba, kapag may nagpapatayo ng bahay, magugulat na lang, there are remains after that. So, hindi, excuse me, hindi naman pwedeng hukay ng hukay ang mga paleontologists sa lahat na nanugan just for this, no? Hindi naman yun. Sometimes, they're, they're digging areas, pero wala naman talaga sila nakikita. So, it's also a hit and miss type. Kaya, probably, hindi rin mabubuo yung fossil records kasi hindi na rin naman lahat ng lugar. Pwede niyang bukayan pa. Okay? Now, second evidence of evolution, this is now comparative analysis or homologies. Na-discuss ko na ang homologous and analogous parts of organisms iba nung nakaraan. So, comparative anatomy or analysis study the anatomical structures to find similarities and difference anatomy sabihin macro scale homologous structures these are parts with similar basic structure derived from same structures in um, our ancestor common descent but they may vary in function so as you can see in here homologous structures all have the humerus the femur the tibia the Carpus, the metacarpus, you have the phalanges, all of this organism, humans man yan, horse man yan, cat yan, cat, bat, bird, even whales, they all have, we all have the same body structure. We have the humerus, we have the fibula, uh, tibia, then we have the carpus, we have the metacarpus, and then we have the Challenges. So, para mo pa rin tayo na uh, anatomy-wise. Kaya lang, iba-iba ng function. Of course, sa atin, grasping. Sa, sa horses, for running. Sa cat, for climbing or something. Sa bat, sa birds, for um, flying. And of course, whales, for swimming. Di ba? Yan. Okay. This is, yung sinasabi, shocks. Hindi ko na may iba din. But, kung babalik niyo yung previous niyo kay Yusuf, uh, Yus, uh, Yustenopteron, meron siya yung mga basic parts ng bones natin. Yung humerus, um, you have the carpus, the carpus. Okay? Homologies. Whales and hummingbirds have tetrapod skeletons inherited from a common ancestor or homologous. But, look at the size of a hummingbird and look at the size of a whale. Di ba malaki? Ang difference. Their bodies have been modified and parts have been lost through natural selection, resulting in adaptation to their respective lifestyle over millions of years. So, except for those bones that have been lost over time, nearly every bone in each corresponds to an equivalent bone structure. Look at this whale. You have the whale and you have here your hummingbird. Ang totoong size ng hummingbird natin, as you can see here, ito lang siya. Ang liit niya compared sa whale. But look at the similarities when it comes to the body structure. Meron tayong skull in here. We have the humerus in here. We have the radio ulna. No, sorry, kanina. Radio ulna. We have the phalanges. We have the carpus. Pareho pa rin ang in the body structure. So, anatomy-wise, almost the same. Kaya la, look at the size. No? Sa size pa lang. And look at the use of this body parts. Magkaiba na siya. So, what makes it different? Probably, yun yung kailangan. Yun yung inaaral ngayon ng marami. What modifies them to be different from each other? Okay? Now, analogies or analogous, alam niyo naman ito mga anak, they have the same function but they have different structure and they do not come from the same common descent like the wings of birds and bats. Na-discuss ko ito last time. 
So comparative anatomy, we have the vestigial structure. So these are reduced body parts that have little to no function and they are remnants of an ancestor characteristic. So examples, the human appendix, other mammals, it is necessary to aid in the digestion. Pero sa atin, it seems to be a vestigial structure na lang. Sabi, meron daw siyang uh, function like in the production of vitamin K or vitamin D. E, but even if you remove this appendix sa atin, okay lang siya. Hindi tayo mamamatay. Um, hindi naman nasisira yung ating life, yung buhay natin. So, pero sa iba, it's necessary. No? Human's external ear muscle. This one. No? To, 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 to. Yun ang dito. So, external ear muscle here. It's useless but it's still there. Pero sa human siguro, kaya meron tayong muscle dyan paglagyan ng airpods. <laughs> paglagyan itong mga sa earphones and air, air, earbuds. Earbuds? Earbuds natin. Uh, human tailbone or our coccyx, yung ating um, vestigial part dito sa dulo, sa pinaka pataas ng yung recto, meron para patayan ka dyan kung kakapain mo, para may pointy portion dyan. That's our coccyx. And this is, for us, it's vestigial, wala siyang function, but it's there. Um, this could probably mean that we do really have share a common ancestor with some of the apes, no? And then, human wisdom teeth, yung nasa dulo na tumutuho sa atin, it seems to be wala siyang function, pero I think merong sinasabi ang mga nasa dentistry, I am not just aware as to what's their main function. Pero, um, as it is, it is considered as a vestigial structure. It could be not present in there, it's okay, it could be present in there, it's still okay. And bird wings um, compared to your penguins, which is adapted for swimming. So, sa penguins, parang um, yung wings ng mga birds is a uh, vestigial structure kasi ginagamit na lang yun ito for swimming. Okay. Vestigial parts, another example is yung sa ating archaeopteryx. Um, kung titingnan natin yung sa mga birds natin, meron siyang claws in here. Pero, sa mga birds natin ngayon, may mga claws pa rin siya dun sa wings niyo. Parang pag gano'n na tinatanggal nila nanay niyo yung sing kapal ng guluto. It's already a vestigial part kasi hindi na siya ginagamit ng mga birds into clawing or parang pagkapit sa puno. More on their feet na yung ginagamit nila. Or um, um, for uh, pagkapit yung paana nila rather than the claw on their wings. Yeah. So, the presence of that claws on the wings reflects that the bird ancestors had clawed hands. Another one is on here. The foot of the pig, yung sa digits uh, 1, completely lost na siya. Digits 2 and 5 have been greatly reduced and only the digits 3 and 4 are working. But, no, um, probably ano kaya yung nangyari bakit na lost itong functions nito that I am not certain about pero probably siguro meron din kasi phalanges din siya kumbaga ito nawala na to tapos tong 2 and 5 parang wala na lang siya so ganyan na lang siya itong 3 and 4 na lang meron sa kanya as to the reason why probably because of the lifestyle that they have no they need for running or yung pagka iwan na good probably there's a reason behind that yung sa kanilang environmental conditions siguro palagi silang praying so i don't know pero sa depende siguro sa habit sa lifestyle ng organism embryology is also on the for comparative anatomy no um, patterns of embryological development can indicate a common ancestry. So, like us, fish, birds, mammals, reptiles, um, all have gills, but only the fishes retain gills, especially during the first part of the embryo. Meron tayong parang kiwa dito sa ating leeg that is used for breathing 
ng uh, mga fetus or ng mga embryo noon. Fish, birds, and humans and reptiles all have tails. All but humans retain theirs. So, as you can see, walang kaibahan ng itsura ng fish, reptile, birds, and human on the development of the fetus. Yeah. But at the end of the day, humans lang din mo hindi nag- uh, ng prejudice sa mga tiyas natin, nawawala yung mga yields natin, depende na siya sa genetic makeup natin sa pag-develop. You may be um, discussing this on your death bio. Mas maintindihan na siya. And then, biochemical similarities and evidences. Ito na yung mga evidences, the third evidence of evolution that is based on microscopic ones. Yung mga hindi mo naman na nakita but can only be seen on the DNA, on the RNA template of the organism. So, similarity of proteins, RNA, and DNA molecules. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo sometimes that we are 92 to 98% um, similar with um, chimpanzee. Yeah. Why? Because there is similarity in our uh, DNA molecules or template. Like, we are 92% similar with dandelion plant. So, meron lang time 8% uh, difference with them. And that 8% might have caused us to lose our photosynthetic ability or hindi tayo nakapagmana ng ability to photosynthesize and make our own food. Yan, dyan pumapasok siya. The more closely related organisms are, the more similar is the biochemical makeup. That is why, um, if you can still remember in systematics, must finish favor ang three domains of life. Yung uh, archaea, yung ating eukarya, and yung isa pang domain ng life na din, rather than the kingdom um, classification. Kasi sa domains of life, it is based on the similarities on biochemical characteristics of organisms. Now, it indicates common ancestor and there is universality of genetic code. So, it supports evolution. And similar chemistry and structure of chromosomes among eukaryotes, chlorophyll, the same basic molecule in all photosynthetic organisms. Example, this is just an example. The sequences of amino acids in some parts of the hemoglobin molecules. As you can see in here, look at the, um, please look at for the humans in here and look at for the gorilla and then the chimpanzee. As you can see, we have the lysine, um, glutamine, uh, histidine, and then kung papansinin mo, Pareho pa rin si chimpanzee in here. Iso, leucine. Iso, leucine. Pero kay gorilla, it's only nicene. Ngayon, pagdating naman kay, kay horse and kay zebra, they are the same. No? Arginine, nicene, histidine. Dito lang sila nagkataro sa arginine at nicene. So, you can see in here, ito yung example na sinasabi natin sa biochemical similarities. They're looking at the protein sequence similarity. Ito sa hemoglobin molecule. Also, there's also other ways to look at the similarities of um, organism. It could be on protein here, DNA, nucleotide sequence, and sequence alignment. So, it's not only the fossil records, it's not only the comparative anatomy, we also look at the macro, yung macro scale, yung malalaki, but also the micro scales. And of course, after the biochemical um, evidences, as I said uh, earlier, just like on the fossil, there are observable events that can be chronologically arranged. May ayos na siya chronologically in um, as an evidence of evolution na happy for the fossil one the comparative anatomy the homologies analogies and then yung um part natin on the biochemical on the microscopic one dna rna protein lahat ng yan you will consider it you know, for it to be an evidence of the evolution of the organism so 
So that will be the end of our discussion for chapter 7. And then I hope you have learned something new again. Sana kahit ganito yung way natin ay meron kayong natutunan na may naroon kayong nakuhang aral dito. I hope, um, hindi ko kasi alam kung paano i-edit pa kami mamali akong nasabi on the previous one. Excuse me. If you have any question or clarification, uh, please PM me or message me na lang. No? So, that will be all. It's now 12.05 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, gabi ko to siya. Direct. Sinaantok na tayo. Ako pala. So, if you don't have any question, uh, of course, hindi mo masasabi dito. Like that. Uh, you can just DM me or you can just message me, guys. No? I hope or God bless you on your exam. And I hope I gave all the information that is needed in the hearing. Of course, meron pa naman iba ang mga evidences. And I'm glad also if you can share that on the GC matter. So thank you guys for having me. Good night. Good day. Have fun. And I hope to see you guys on the next meeting or probably on the next semester. I'm not yet sure how many weeks you have to go to. But as it is, since this is the last topic, I hope and you will be grateful. I have given you all the information sa aking abot ang makakaya para maintindihan ninyo ang evolutionary biology. And I hope guys na na-appreciate kung siya yung efforts ko kahit pa paano. Kahit hindi siya gano'ng kaganda or kasing galing siguro ng efforts ng iba sa inyo when it comes to video. Um, I hope I could still have given you the information that you need for evolutionary biology. And with that, thank you for the good semester that we have. Um, thank you for being good um, students and also good na mga. See you again. Goodbye. God bless you.